Hey guys, Lord Wolf 99 uh, back again with another Lunar Legend. Uh, series is going really strong at the moment, guys. Um, I've I've stopped keeping count of how many episodes there are, um, purely because there's that many at the moment, and I've literally got a list, and I think I've got like six or seven more ideas um, that still need filming. So the series is going really well so far, um, and like I keep saying, I'm really enjoying filming this series, guys. It's honestly, it's just super chill, and I kind of get to sit back and just talk, and yeah, it, it's great. Um, so this episode is called Delirious Driving, and it is a solo episode. There are no guest stars uh, this week, so if you were coming um, expecting, you know, another... Another duo, um, I apologise, um, but stay tuned for next week, because that probably will be, because uh, at the moment I don't have too many solo stories, because um, I've, as I've said before, guys, most of my stories are with Adam, because we used to go out like every day, and hang out and shit, so, but this is just a solo story, and it's not just one story, uh, this episode, guys, it's, it's more, sort of, uh, an accumulation, 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 accumulation <laughs> of um, mainly just all my driving stories. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna get into it, guys. Um, delirious driving. Here we go. Um, so basically, um, I keep saying I'm sorry, guys. When I was uh, sixteen, yeah, I think I just turned sixteen. Um, my mum and dad uh, paid for me to um, do a CBT, which, if you don't know, it's a, a scooter, basically. It's a scooter test, which you can drive at 16. Uh, a moped is what we call them. Um, so, yeah, I did that, and my mum and dad paid for that when I was 16, and they also bought me my first and only ever moped which was a really nice bike to be fair, it was brand new, it was incredible and I can't thank my mum and dad enough for that um, but yeah, so CBT um, is basically the test you do so that you can um, ride, ride a moped um, and it takes one day and you pay like a certain amount of money and you go to the, the like I was going to say facility, so it's more of just a yard <laughs> where I went um, and you go and you uh, you basically test all the, like you, you learn how to ride a, uh, a scooter, a moped and you know basic rules of the road and you know how to ride it, how to manoeuvre it, all that kind of thing um, they go you go through it on the yard in the morning and you know it's it's probably about 200 meters, um, like long, and you just, you basically go up and down that in the morning, and in the afternoon, if they decide, like, you're good enough, and everything, you go out on the roads, and, you know, you do that, and, you know, so that they can see that you can actually ride on the roads, and you're safe to ride on the roads, uh, which is great, um, so I did that, only <laughs> it's supposed to take one day, I, I, I fucked up, like, I don't know, I, I was crap, uh, I'll be honest, I was crap, so it didn't take me one day, it, it took me two days, um, I did go on the Friday, and I just, I really couldn't get the hang of it at all, and yeah, <laughs> basically I, I failed. Um, so they kept me on the on the yard in the afternoon, and they were going through stuff. They were really nice about it, to be fair, guys. Um, like they they could have turned around and been like, you know, we charge, you know, this set fee for the day. So you know, if you come back, you're gonna have to pay the fee again. But they didn't. They they turned around and said, you know, come back on Monday, and um, we'll try again, and we'll try and get you out on the road. So. Friday, I'm I'm thinking like I'm an absolute failure. Like I hated it. I'm, I'm like oh, I'm never gonna be able to do this. Proper beating myself up, and you know my mum and dad picked me up, and they're like it's fine. You know you go back on Monday, and 
you know, you, you, you'll try again, like, it's not the end of the world. And it won't, but I was feeling down, so I wanted to be alone. Um, so I remember that night I went to cinema on my own, and I, I watched um, the Bad Education movie, because um, that was out at the time, uh, and then I went straight from that screening into the screening of um, Sinister 2, because, um, I mean, I'm sure you know by now, guys, I absolutely love horror, and yeah, it was a great film, <laughs> and I needed I needed to do something to just take my mind off it, but yeah, um, I go back on the Monday and try again, and it's a lot more successful. And, you know, I end up getting out on the road in the afternoon, and it's great. You know, it all goes well. Um, we come back, and what they do is they sit you in a little room, and they just ask you a couple of questions, like basic road safety stuff, um, just so that they can basically say that they've asked you the questions and that you are road safe. And I remember um, one of the questions was, like, they were showing road signs, and the sign that they showed was like it's a picture of like a car and then a, a, a motorbike um like above it above the car and they're like what does this mean so i'm like obviously like you know you can't overtake cars in those areas and the guy goes no it means you're not allowed to jump over cars <laughs> which was great you know they, they all had a sense of humor and it was great and it went a lot better the second day and i ended up passing which was great and then, you know, because a CBT only lasts, uh, I think it was two years. I can't remember. I, I can't remember properly. It's either two or three years it lasts. So I ended up getting it again a few years later, only I had to pay for it this time because I was an adult and, you know, it sucks. <laughs> but, yeah, by the by, I did it again and it was fine. I passed again. Um, but didn't really use my bike that much by that point. Um, but yeah, that's <laughs> by the by. Um, we're already seven minutes in, and that's the fair story. So, um, so yeah, my uh, my mum and dad got me uh, a moped um, around the same time. Um, brand new moped. It was really nice. And ba basically, why they'd done this, guys, is um, it was so that I could get to um, college because I did the CBT and got the bike in July, August time. And I was back at college in, what well, I said back at, I was starting college in September. And where I was going for college was the same place I went to school, but it was, you know, further away. It, not You know what I mean? Like, it, it's not close to home, is what I'm trying to say. Um, it's in, like, a home of a town. And, yeah, so I used to use my moped to go to, to college, and it was great. I remember the first day of college, I, um, <laughs> fucking muppet that I am, I, I locked my, my keys in my bike, <laughs> which is great, because <laughs> I'm an idiot, because I used to, like, I used to wear a, a, like, a proper bike jacket, and I'd wear that whilst I was riding, and I used to, you know, keep everything in it, and then I'd, I'd get to school, I'd like be locking up and everything and I'd take my keys out and i put them in my pocket in my jacket pocket and then obviously the jacket's quite bulky and I don't want to carry that around all day so what I do is I fold it up and put it in my seat because I don't know if you know but seat on a moped you have like a little storage section so I fold it up I put it in there and lo and behold my keys are still inside my pocket so <laughs> Yeah, I had to. I had to get my dad to to come because he had the spare set of keys. Because God, you can't trust me with both. Because I mean, I'd already locked one set in the bike, you know. Um, so he came um, out of his way, bless him, um, to to help me with that and you know get me my keys back. And it's embarrassing to say it wasn't the first time. <laughs> like. I mean, I, not fair, it was the first time I meant it wasn't the only time it happened. Um, it happened a few times whilst I was at college that he had to come and bail me out because I'd locked my keys in my bike, which is fucking stupid. I'm an idiot, but by the by. But um, whilst I had my moped, guys, there was, you know, a few, few issues, a few issues. Like, I came off my bike a few times. Um, the first time was literally um, around the October, um, so I'd only been riding for a few months, 
and it's a fucking shit day in terms of weather like really raining pouring down like it is crap it's stormy weather and I've gone to college it's a week off but I've gone to college uh, to do a rehearsal um, because obviously I did drama and you know everything like that I did theatre studies in college and yeah so <laughs> I went to a rehearsal, and then on the way back, I literally, I, I was literally around the corner from, from my home, where I lived and everything, and it was around about weather shit, and my bike just goes out from underneath me, and I'm sliding across the floor, like, literally sliding, and, like, I looked towards my feet, and I could just see my bike sliding away from me as well, and... Honestly, guys, it's trippy as fuck. It's it's mental, like the amount of adrenaline you've got going in like that situation. Like it was insane, it, and I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it. <laughs> like that sounds ridiculous because you know, obviously, why why in like who who in the right mind enjoys that shit? You know, <laughs> like I'm coming off my bike for fuck's sake, but the adrenaline rush just got me. Like I loved it. Um, but yeah, I ended up coming off my bike, and, you know, it's the first time I'd ever come off my bike, it's the first time I'd ever, like, experienced that amount of adrenaline and everything, and I'm in shock, and <laughs> I am I literally, like, crawl to the side of the road, because there's, like, a grass bank, and I crawl onto the fucking grass bank, and, like, I take my helmet off and drop it, and I, I'm, like, fucking, like, <laughs> I'm in pain, uh, and I'm, like, fucking struggling, and bless this guy, this this guy in a car saw me and he stopped, bless him, and at this point, like, my bike was in the middle of the roundabout, and, like, it wasn't in his way or anything, he could have, he could have, you know, quite easily drove off and just left, but he didn't, he, you know, he, he did the nice thing, he stopped, he picked my bike up and he brought it to, like, to the side of the road where I was, and he stood with me for a few minutes to check that I was okay and everything. Asked me if I wanted a lift, uh, like anywhere or anything like that. He was a nice guy, to be fair. Uh, but I said to him, no, I should be fine. Like, I didn't live around the corner. And, yeah, <laughs> it was fucking shocking. And I get home and I've got, like, a massive gash, like, down my fucking, my side. It, well, it wasn't nice. Like, it wasn't anything serious. Like, it was, I don't want to, like, say it was deep or anything. It was just, a, like, a massive, like gash and it's like ah oh, it was it was grim but yeah <laughs> and then the same thing happened on a different roundabout um near my first place of work like i was almost at work and it's rush hour traffic in the morning and again it's shit weather raining england go figure and i come off my bike <laughs> and yeah and most people have just been absolute assholes about it and, you know, they're berating me and fucking honking their arms and just being assholes. And only one guy in a van actually, like, parked up next to me and, like, he didn't get out or anything, just stopped and he rolled his window down. Is that you all right, mate? Like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Like, you know, I'll be fine. You know, and I don't know. Like, I get they need to get to work and stuff, but, like, I've just come off my fucking bike. Can you give me a, give me a sec, like... I just need to um, get my shit together, you know, and, and compose myself. Like, that was more scary because it was rush hour, and I'm literally sat thinking to myself, holy shit, I'm going to die. There's going to, like, a car's just not going to be paying attention, and they're going to, like, run over my head or something. Like, I was shitting myself. <laughs> but I ended up being fine. Um, I took the day of work. <laughs> because, you know, stress, shock, and you know, all everything. I was, I was in shock. Which I was, I was, I was in shock. Um, I, I maybe did play on it a little bit to get out of work that day. But that's besides the point, you know, it, it's what it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of just going into these stories just repeatedly, guys, because it, it, I don't know. That's the, the whole point of this video, you know, is just go from one story to the next to the next. They're all about driving and the road and stuff. So again, like, with my first place of work, um, again, like, rush hour traffic, only not in the morning, I'm leaving work this time, and, sorry about that, guys, <laughs> pardon me, um, I get to the end of the road, and it's T-junction, literally, like, 
works within spitting distance at this point. And it's rush hour traffic, T junction, so I stop because there's cars coming and they have the right of way. And some old guy goes into the back of me and pushes me into the fucking traffic. And I am shitting myself, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I, I, I'm, like, I was fuming, and, like, I ended up, like, getting the guy to pull over, and, you know, he, he couldn't be more apologetic. He, he, he explained that, like, I mean, he shouldn't have had this assumption, but he, he presumed, uh, assumed, um, because I was, uh, you know, on a moped, that I, I was just going to go for it. You know, that I wouldn't care about the rules of the road and that I would, I would just, you know, go for it. And no, dude, that's not how it works. Like, yeah, some people are absolute assholes and on mopeds. You know, most people are and they will just go for it. But no, I'm, I'm you know, a, a rule abider and yeah, <laughs> it's just like, it, it shocked me. It like, like, I understand where he was coming from but it, it really did fucking shock me like again I could, I could have died like all, all it takes all it would have took was him for him to have knocked me like a few more inches forward and for me to have not been as quick on the brakes and I'd have been hit by a car and that would have been his fault and you know it's it's one of them things like yeah but then, yeah, a, a, a few more stories on the way home from work, as per usual. Um, rush hour traffic, um, but once you get past that initial part, it's it's fairly easy going. Um, and you come to this dual carriageway. And my bike can only do 30, and dual carriageway, obviously, speed limit is 40. Um, so the rules are... Like if it's if it's traffic, I can I can go down the middle of it. Like there, there's a lot of um, like questions about that, and you see a lot of road users on in comment sections on Facebook and stuff who think that we're not allowed to do that. We are we are allowed to do that. It's it is perfectly legal to do it. It's not illegal at all. We can do that. Just to clarify. So yeah, I, I can do that if there's traffic, but if there's not. If it's um you know if there's not any traffic, I just have to stick to the side of the road, like close to the cab, so that cars can pass me, you know reasonably. Fair enough. So I was on the dual carriageway and I'm literally right up against the cab. I couldn't go any closer to the fucking cab, and this cunt, this absolute wanker, in a van, goes past me, and I'm I'm not even kidding, guys. There was literally about a centimetre between that van and me. And they're honking their own and fucking being absolute wankers. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, not only have you just honked for no fucking reason, you've sped past me, left me no fucking room to breathe, and you're being assholes. Like, nah, I wasn't having it. I was fuming. So, a uh, bit further down, there actually is some traffic. So, I pulled down the middle. And I pull up to the I pull up to the door of the van and I knock on the window. And they roll the window down and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? But yeah, I did, like my adrenaline was going, guys, I was fuming as fuck. And I, and there's three of them in the van and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? You could've you could have fucking knocked me off my bike. And they're getting gobby and everything. And it's a, it, like the worst part is it's a fucking business van. Like the van's got all this for I'm not gonna say the company name because I'm not that much of an asshole. But it, it's got all these, like, this branding on the side of the van for the company. And they're being absolute assholes. And one of them, the passenger, got out and offered, like, offered to have me, like, have it out and have a fight. And it's like, no, you fucking dickhead. Like, I'm not going to have a fucking fight with you. You're a cunt. I'm going to call you a cunt. But I'm not going to have a fucking fight in the middle of the road, in the middle of fucking traffic with you, am I? fucking retard <laughs> so yeah and I'm fuming I'm fuming all the way home and, and like all the way home I'm repeating the name of that company in the side of, in, like inside my head and I get home and I go straight upstairs and my mum like what like is like entertaining someone like one of her friends and she's like what's going on what's going on 
and I'm like, no, it's fine, it's fine, I'm fine. I go upstairs, I shut my door, and I find the fucking cunt, don't I? Find him on Facebook, you know? Find his business and everything, you know? And I find a mobile number for the business. So I ring it, and I'm like, have you got three guys driving around in a van? And the guy's the guy suddenly becomes really fucking cautious, and he's like, yeah, why? And, I, I, and straight away I go, because they almost fucking killed me on the fucking road. They're driving like fucking nutters. And it turns out, this guy, who was the owner of the business, mind you, was the one fucking driving the fucking van. So I, I, asked, I had it out with him on the phone. We're both fucking shouting at each other and, you know, being fucking massive wankers about it. And, you know, hang up and I ring the cops. <laughs> I ring the police. And told them about his reckless driving. Because he was, he was being a fucking wanker. <laughs> like, they, the police can't really do much about it, fair enough. But, you know, he was being an absolute ass. And the police ended up ringing me back. And they were like, oh, like, did, did you try and break his, break his car window? Like, the van window? And I was like, no. I knocked on the window, which I told you in my initial report. Like, that I, I drove up to the, like, window and knocked on it to speak to them. And the cops were like, oh, right, okay, yeah, that's fine. Like, he, he said you, you were, like, proper hammering on it and punching it and trying to break it. And I was like, no, why would I do that? Like, uh, why would I ring you if I've done something wrong? And they're like, yeah, all right. well, we had a word with him, and, yeah, he's, he's going to be more careful in future. Is he fuck? He's a fucking wanker. He really is. Fucking asshole, man. He's... Lucky that I'm not incl more like inclined and you know to be an asshole and you know be a criminal because he was a muppet. He, his name, like, I'm not going to say his name because I still remember it. It's a car a carpet company, and the name of the company was literally his name, his full name, his his first name, his surname, and then carpets. So not only could I find his business, but I found his actual Facebook profile, you know, which the Muppet had his address list and everything. So if I if I was that way inclined and I was a criminal, which I'm not, I could have I could have been a royal asshole to him. I really could have, but I didn't. And you know, I'm I'm a bigger person for that. I feel, and he's gonna rot in hell somewhere. I really hope. I hope he has the like a lot of misfortune in his life, and I do not care, guys. So don't, don't blame him. That's horrible. No, it's not. He was a wanker. <laughs> it's justified if they're a wanker. <laughs> uh, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a nice person. Sometimes, guys, I will be the first to admit that. But this guy is not a nice person either. So you know he deserves whatever misfortunes happen to be coming his way. That is just how it is. But yeah. <laughs> And then, like, again, another time, not during rush hour, same dual carriageway, I'm driving down it, and this guy's an asshole, does pretty much the same thing as these guys in the van, and he's mouthing off in his mirror, and, you know, I can hear him shouting and swearing, so I flip him off, and he, he fucking slams on his brake, and gets out of his car, and I'm, I'm like, I'm stopped behind him at this point, because he's causing traffic, and he's got out of his car, and he's he's coming towards me, and I'm like, yeah, what do you want? Like, what what do you want, big man? Because he was fat as fuck, to be fair. You know, I'm quite big myself, but he was fat as fuck, and he, he's wobbling towards me more like, and I'm like, what the fuck do you want? And I wait for him to get like a, a meter away, uh, and you know, by this point, like he he's nowhere near his his car. And then I just drive around the side of his car and pull up in front of him. <laughs> so he wobbles fucking back to his car and he gets in and he's ranting and raving behind the seat and he's out of breath and everything and I'm fucking laughing to myself. Uh, assholes, man. Absolute assholes, guys. Like, they are. Like, yeah, all right. Most Like, a lot of people on mopeds are absolute wankers. I'll admit that. I wasn't there, I followed the rules of the world, and I was only ever a wanker, if you were a wanker first. It's like, the problem is, most people who drive cars assume they have more right, like more rights to the road 
than any fucker else. And they automatically assume that they know the rules. And it's like, well, no, you clearly fucking don't. Because you'd have them ranting and raving to you. That, like, you, you're on the wrong side, you know, of the road. And you shouldn't be doing that. And you shouldn't be on this road if you can't do the speed limit. It's like, no, fuck off. Learn the law. And fucking do one. Like, fucking get a life. It's sad as fuck, guys. It really is. But yeah. <laughs> um, and then... A few years later, after I'd done my second CBT, um, I, I was at my second job by this point, and it was around the time that I was having that pain in my side that I mentioned in another video, and it was literally around the start of that, and I'd been in hospital the um, the day before, up until like midnight, and then I was back there in the morning, and then I was back there like every week just about random shit, like, just, you know, to see if they could find out what was going on with me, and, yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, so, I'm in a lot of pain, and my bike got stolen from our garden, because I used to keep it in my mum and dad's garden, but it was chained up, like, it was chained to the ground, and, like, locked up and secure and everything, like, all that, and, but they, they cut the fucking, they didn't even cut the chain, they couldn't get through the chain, because the chain was fucking great, they cut through the fucking bolt on the ground, um, but none of us heard him, and the fuckers got away with my bike, and my dad went looking for it the next day, because I was at work, and he found it not far from our house, and it had been burnt, the fuckers burnt it, <laughs> which I find hilarious like I do find this hilarious it pissed me off at the time it really did and it still annoys me now but what I find funny is they couldn't get you know they, they couldn't use the bike the chains were still on it and the chains are still usable now because they're that fucking good like we paid for good chains to secure the bike and that's why they burnt it because they couldn't fucking go joyriding on it and, like, I'd rung the police the night before and obviously reported my bike being stolen. And um, I ring them the next day and I'm like, oh, by the way, I found my bike. And they're like, oh, do you know it's your bike? Uh, because the chains are still on it and I've just unlocked the chains. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Police Officer. Because uh, I, I, I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm not belittling the police or you know berating them or anything like there's not much they can do about moped thefts or motorbike thefts or anything like that that's just genuinely the case they can't do much about it um yeah there's not much they can do about it, it it's just it is annoying that they can't do much about it i think i know who did it as well and you know, yeah yeah <laughs> not gonna say obviously but i do think i know who who stole it and karma is a bitch, you know. Like I said about the other guy, you know. I hope this person gets whatever they come get, like have come into them, and they rot in hell for all their sins, <laughs> as we all will one day. <laughs> but yeah, um, but before that, like at this point, I wasn't using my bike that much anyway. It was still a kick in the teeth, but I wasn't using it. Um, but yeah, when I was at my first job, I'd started learning how to how to drive a car. And like my mum and dad bought me a little run around, and I used to drive my mum around and and stuff like that, and I used to have driving lessons and everything. And it, like to end on like a bit of a funny one, um, I I was do with my driving instructor once and doing a proper lesson, and that particular lesson we were doing an emergency stop, and my driving instructor used to pick me up uh, before work. So, like, I'd get to drive around for an hour and then, like, we'd literally stop outside my work so I could just go straight in. Um, so I'd have, like, my, my lunch on the back seat and stuff, only I'd have it in, like, a, a plastic bag. And this particular day, I, I had M&Ms in the bag. And the bag, like, the M&M pouch was already open because I'd already had a few. And, obviously, M&M pouches are resealable with that little sticker. <laughs> So, yeah, I resealed it. It was in the plastic bag. 
and we're driving, we're driving, and, and then my instructor just goes, stop, and I do the emergency stop, and there's M&Ms everywhere, only he hasn't noticed at this point, and he, he's like, right, carry on, so I like, put the, put the guy in gear and everything, set off again, but I'm not driving properly, I, I'm literally pulling into the side of the road, and he's like, what are you doing, I, I haven't told you to do this, and I'm like, yeah, I know, but there's there's food all over your car, and like under the pedals and stuff and I'd rather get rid of that before we carry on driving yeah, just to avoid an accident <laughs> it was great m ms everywhere um, yeah I just thought we'd end on that because it's a bit of a, a bit more of a light hearted one guys um, yeah <laughs> it's great um, the f funny story is you know it's and clearly quite a long one. I, I, I genuinely didn't think this video would be that long, but once I've started talking, it's just, it's taken this long. And I haven't done a solo video this long yet, so I'm hoping it's good, guys. <laughs> but, yeah, um, that's the end of another Lunar Legend, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying the series as much as I am filming it. And, yeah, it's just good vibes all round, guys. Good vibes all round. Um, I'm hopefully going to be recording more of these uh, ones that I said I've got noted uh, with Adam over the next few days. Uh, you won't see them for like a month and a half, two months, you know. I've got that many already scheduled and it's that many there that we need to fill, but, you know, it's probably going to take us into December, actually. You know, the amount that I've got planned and shit. But that's all good. It's It's all gravy, guys. But, yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. And please like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I'll see all you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!